Alright, so this video is going to talk about Recommendation.jl, a Julia package for building recommender systems. This is Takuya Kitazawa, and I'm working as a software engineer in the industry. And since this is a lightning talk, uh, I don't have enough time to explain tiny details about the package, but I will do my best to provide some overview about the package. So if you are interested in the details, uh, feel free to visit the GitHub repository uh, under takuti slash recommendation.jl. And also, we are planning to publish a proceeding paper after this talk, and I will try to provide more uh, about the package as well as some of the evaluation result. So if you are interested in that, uh, please also take a look at it. All right, so let's begin with the basic overview of how recommender systems will work. And in short, the recommender system is built on the top of three different types of data set called the user, item, and its value. So user uh, is obviously about users, uh, which will be accompanied by uh, some of the demographics information about the users. And items are obviously about items uh, with some of the attributes such as price and category. And between users and items, there must be some interactions on the systems. So for example, if you are working on the e-commerce site, the event uh, will be more like a purchase behaviors. So if user purchased a single item on that e-commerce site, that information can be captured by the 01 binary flag so that you can understand if this user purchased this item in the past or not. And basically, uh, this information uh, will be converted in the form of the matrix. So in this figure, uh, the rows represent users and the columns represent items. And between users' items, and we have some numbers uh, which represent some of the observed event. And by doing some of the matrix computations on the top of user item matrices, the recommender uh, will ultimately generate top K ranked list of recommended items for individual users. So this is the high level overview of how recommenders will work. And as I mentioned, the majority of recommender system computations uh, will rely on the vector or matrix calculations. So the Julia programming language and recommender systems uh, is the combination. So that's the point I want to highlight here. And I, I don't know how many of you attended JuliaCon 2019, but actually I presented a similar topic in 2019 there. And at that moment, uh, I spoke mainly about how to build recommender systems and introduction to some of the basic recommendation algorithms and also why Julia can be a deeply satisfying way uh, to build the recommender systems. And uh, of course, you know, uh, these are the basic information I highlighted at the moment, but in practice, the life cycle of recommender systems spans across the from data collection towards the post processing. So in this talk, I want to also mention about these perspectives in the following slides. But before that, uh, the data accessibility uh, of the recommendation.jl package looks like this. So this is something I highlighted uh, in the 2019 JuliaCon presentation. So if you are interested in that details, also take a look at the recording video on the JuliaCon YouTube channel. But basically, like I said, the recommender data uh, is represented uh, by the combination of user, item, and value. So in recommendation.jl package, uh, we have a dedicated struct uh, called event. And a set of events uh, can be represented uh, in the form of data accessor, which is an intermediate component uh, which translates the low input into recommender-friendly dataset. So thanks to the intermediate layer, the users of recommendation.jl uh, can be easily manipulate dataset uh, without worrying too much about like missing data or data validity or something like that. So the only thing uh, you have to do is to create a data model and pass the data model uh, to the actual recommendation model provided by recommendation.jl. So it's quite simple. But that said, uh, it's been three years since last time uh, I spoke about the package, and the package itself uh, evolved a lot. And right now we are trying to provide our the release version 1.0.0, the stable version of the package in the coming months uh, when we publish a proceeding paper of this talk. But the difference here, uh, I want to highlight here, uh, is listed here. So first of all, uh, in terms of recommendation algorithms, uh, which is the middle of the slide, 
uh, we added a couple of new recommendation algorithms, such as matrix factorization with BPR loss or factorization machines. Or uh, you, you can't start anything without data. So, but, but at the same time, uh, it's not always true that uh, you have access to the industry quality gigantic amount of data set. So for that kind of use cases, the latest version of recommendation.jl provide a dedicated data downloader so that you can easily download the publicly available data set for the experiment's sake. Or when it comes to evaluation, uh, the recommendation.jl right now provides a lot of non-accuracy metrics. So the important tree recommendation is not only about accuracy improvement, but also it is important to provide diverse set of recommendations so that we can enrich customers' taste uh, thanks to the recommendation. So this type of metrics are right now available uh, as part of recommendation.jl package. So the latest usage of the package looks like this. You can get the data through the dedicated data downloader, and also you can easily create or build recommendation algorithm by calling some dedicated uh, function. So in this example, we are creating factorization machines based recommender. And ultimately, uh, by calculating the sum of, uh, by, by calling the measures function, you can capture the accuracy or non-accuracy metrics of the recommendation result. So speaking of evaluation, there must be some trade-off between accuracy and non-accuracy metrics. And uh, fortunately, and, uh, the recommendation.jl provides a wide variety of both accuracy metrics and non-accuracy metrics. So you can always compare uh, both of the metrics depending on your objective. And ultimately, uh, you could definitely uh, optimize your recommendation result uh, based on your own definition of the good recommendation. All right, so last but not least, uh, I want to briefly mention about what kind of other uh, packages or tools exist uh, in the community. So there are quite a few options uh, in the open source communities, but uh, what I highlight here is, for example, uh, the MyMediaWrite written in C Sharp or Librec written in Java, and of course, Python has a lot of packages such as LensKit and LightFM. And depending on the language, uh, that these tools implement the matrix computations or data modeling logic uh, by the, 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 their unique ways. But in that sense, the recommendation.jl or Julia itself uh, provides a wide variety of built-in functionalities for vector and matrix representations. So by using recommendation.jl, you can take full advantage of built-in offering uh, for the sake of simplicity and efficiency of building recommenders. So that's it, and more detail will be coming in proceedings.